Okay, just I will make the introduction during this time. This is not my slides, but well. So nice to meet you. If I don't, don't know me, I'm Nicolas Knas. I'm original writer of Axe programming, so of uh, Axe language. So yeah, when I was asked to come today, uh, the topic was about do something about talk about something that might please to web developers that might talk something about web developers. I already come from web, like uh, you guys say about the history of Axe. I was doing a lot of web games back in the Flash days. and uh, But these days, I mostly do game development, like on PC, Steam, and consoles. So I'm a bit far from the web developments. So I was thinking, OK, what, what should I present today to you that might be related more to the things you're doing every day? And uh, the thing is, as we there's similar problems we are tackling in web development that you might have to uh, doing uh, doing a game development and web development. There are some common areas where uh, things are shared. Um, one problem we had in our games recently was, I mean, all games have this problem, but we getting more and more in these problems was about ways to to handle the UI of our games. Uh, one is technical stuff. Well. You need good algorithms. You need good like architecture, but the UI is always the messy parts, the parts that you know there's a lot of boilerplate, boilerplate things to do, to be done. So we wanted to improve our tooling there to create uh, new tools. And uh, being I've been having been web developer in the past, I, I really like the concept of of uh, of the DOM of the having to way to describe a new UI using uh, some kind of markup language, be able to to modify the, the visual with the CSS or simi something similar, and be able to uh, to get a real-time feedback when you modify something. For example, you don't have to be a coder. You can modify CSS. An artist can actually see the, the changes and make changes. So the coder doesn't have to do all, everything by himself. He can just provide the, div, uh, the designer uh, the things he needs, or get the design that is already made by a designer and integrate it. And so it can, it can be a teamwork. It's more efficient to, sp to split things between developers and, and non-developers. Are we there? Yeah, yeah almost. Yeah. And, um, and so uh, I, I really like this both paradigms of markup language together with CSS. So, But one problem we have is that once you start having uh, custom components, which are very game specific. Uh, for instance, in our games, we might have some components that takes data out of the GPU. So it can, can be textures, it can be 3D models that we want to display. It can be many different things that are very game specific. Uh, we can't express them as a simple, you know, trying to create like we do HTML nodes. So it's it's actually for more, uh, we wanted something to be able to describe more advanced custom components. And the way you you link them together and you build them together, and still be able to use uh, technologies such as CSS and markup language to, to have a way to declare them easily and to describe them and customize them. So. So I came with this. Uh, it was initially named UIKit, uh, but I got told that it's already used by Apple. And I did a search, and it was true. So I actually renamed it to DOMKit just yesterday, but not everywhere. So it's still a lot of UIKit showing, but just assume that the library is not yet released. I've been working on this on the past weeks. So it's still very fresh. So excuse me, there are some bugs in the demo I will be showing you. Uh, so basically, what it does, it's it, the thing is that when I and I built it, I built it for our game engine at first, and I quickly realized that it was actually very not at all dependent from the engine. So I took it out of the engine, and it can be used to you to build your own component system uh, for whatever engine. If you're using HTML, you can be used to create HTML components. Uh, if you are using your own custom DOM, uh, your own custom C uh, component system, you can build uh, use uh, this uh, DOM kit to implement your own thing. So, so it provides uh, 
uh, XML markup language uh, to describe your components. You provide a CSS engine to apply CSS property to these components uh, that can have custom effects on these components. It, co it provides a builder, which is not yet complete, which is a way to actually uh, interact in real time and display the components as they change. And it provides a way to declare and uh, expose custom components from your code to the markup language. So, and of course, because I'm, uh, we are in Axe, we wanted everything to be uh, strictly typed everywhere. So um, let me show you a bit how it works. So um, I will showcase using uh, IPS because this is the only way we get some, so far, uh, we get some nice display with UIKit. But uh, you, are, you will understand quickly that it can be applied to many different kind of rendering, uh, not only IPS. So here we have a class view, which is a actually a custom view. Uh, in IPS, we don't have a concept of a div like you have in HTML. Uh, but we have something which is pretty similar, which is called a flow. So H2D flow is a, it's like a, it's a block of an element block that can contain other elements and then actually have some kind of layout algorithm to display them uh, either horizontally or vertically. You can think it, uh, if you are familiar with HTML, such as a flexbox somehow. So here we extend uh, a flow and we implement this specific uh, UI kit object, which says that uh, if you find some source, uh, it means that uh, you should parse it at compile time, and uh, it contains some component structure that actually is the way your component is described. So here we declare that it's a flow, and we have actually check we check that. Uh, it extends flow and it's a flow, so we, it will be checked. So if, instance, if I say here this is a bitmap, it will not compile. And we can you have some several and several uh, attributes. So we use attributes, but they can also be CSS properties. You can use it uh, both ways. So you can declare uh, this is actually can be declared as a CSS property, or it can be used declared as an attribute. And here you have to contribute with a RGB uh, exact decimal code. We have a padding value, a minimal width. And here we have this specific uh, content horizontal ali align uh, attribute, which is uh, using React syntax to say, I want this to be the value of uh, the align variable. And the variable, uh, align variable sorry, is part of the constructor here. So when we create a new component, it will create this flow and set its align val value to the content align here. Uh, so uh, the nice thing is that it's really type it because here it, it gets that view actually takes uh, an align of the t type of being flow line because it's able to, uh, since it's a flow, he knows that flow has this content horizontal line CSS property, and he knows that this type of this property is actually a, a flow line. So I will just show you just right now how it looks. Let's compile and run. So it's compiling to uh, AxeJS and showing in the browser. Um, what is this? No, I don't care. So this shows just the flow, it's centered, and you have some inner world that is that is aligned to the right, okay? So this is running in WebGL actually, it's not uh, dumb at all, it's purely uh, WebGL cells. And if we can of course modify the background color here. Um, let's put some other color. And then recompile, and it runs. Okay, so nothing impressive so far. Uh, but the thing is, for instance, if I made a typo here, uh, I didn't check. I mean, I if I put something uh, like uh, just a number here, like uh, like 23 or 33, and I compile, and we get an error saying uh, invalid flow background value 33. Okay, with it gives you the exact position uh, uh, at the place you've been mistaking. So the way it works is that here we declare a view. Uh, which is an object, uh, so uh, it's kind of 
is able to, to parse this. Uh, but we have a way to declare uh, for all our components the way they are actually implemented in two ways. We have actually two things for each property. We have a type which correspond to a runtime type for our compile time time for the property. For instance, we, uh, we declare that this content horizontal line property is of type, is of type flow, line, flow line. And we have uh, another uh, thing which is uh, a parser, which is a way to interpret the CSS to turn it from the CSS value into the actual runtime value. So for instance, here I can as well put write and compile. Okay, I will check, I will fix my background color here first. Um, put some gray. So here I, I couldn't uh, show, show errors. Yeah, and doesn't know anymore what is right here because he doesn't know the type, type of align. So I would just pass null, it's not used. Okay, and here we have this, and it's aligned on the right. And of course, I can modify here, saying left. These are the values that are allowed for this content align. But since we are horizontal, if I use top, for instance, it's not a valid value, and I get invalid flow content align value top. Top should be auto left middle right. Okay. And this is declared somewhere else. It's declared as part of the components declaration, which I will just show you right now. So basically, you have two ways to declare your components. One is to uh, actually implement them this way. I just put the microphone to right a bit. Okay, that's it. That's a very super simple component that we just declare. Uh, we need to define also this name, his name, because uh, we might want to use a different name than this. So here we declare a component. We say it's uh, his name in the markup language will be comp. It has a class component and it has two properties. One is an int and one is a custom color, and the custom color can be either red, green, or blue. So it means that now we can actually use this here using comp uh, color equal red, okay? And vo value equal satisfy. Or I could have, for instance, this be um, value params dot value and this be for instance the horizontal line d be params dot align and I to write this with a single hand is not easy to type on these French keyboards. Yeah. So here I have and here I have a new params which we require both both an, an object with both align and value. Follow? Okay. So and uh, and uh, here, uh, the this is metadata, which is the property for uh, the compliance system. By default, it will use, uh, if it's an integer, it will require CSS to be integer. And if it's an enum like this, it will allow the different enum values. But you might have more complex things. You might have actual full uh, custom 
property that you want to have a special CSS for it, a very custom CSS. For instance, we have that for our background. Background, uh, in here we can specify an URL uh, saying uh, to a specific uh, PNG or resources. This is very specific to IPS, but we can, uh, you can, uh, so we need a way to, to create, to be able to define that. And this is what's exactly what we're doing here. That's what I was about to show you just before. Um, is declare here, h2d, DOM kit, init components. And OK, this is the registration. OK, and this is the bus components. So here is a, a way to declare the bus components in IPS. So we are uh, like directly jump to the flow component. So uh, this is a bit particular here because we are not declaring uh, the flow class already exists and we want to declare a component corresponding to this flow class. So we just redeclare uh, different properties and uh, and yeah and uh, and then we somehow give some setters to say how these properties might affect the real object properties, the actual flow properties. So this is more this is the declaration of the flow component and the flow itself is another class that is part of the engine. Uh, but you don't have to be to have this distinction here. It's just with the way I implemented for IPS. So if for instance we have you have a background which have a tie which is a a part of a 3D texture and two borders that describe all the way uh, the background tiles. And here you have this property uh, called flow background here. And it means that when it's uh, when we are getting a CSS value either at compile time or at runtime, we use the path, the path flow background. And because all these components they extends putting back to up, they extends object comp, which is a base object, and they he have this parser declare, which says when you parse CSS value, use this custom parser. The custom parser has this parse for background and is able to say, okay, if the CSS value is transparent, then I return null. If it's a group with a tile and uh, x, y, I will parse the tile. And if not, I will just Consider it's a tile, and uh, and uh, when you get an invalid value, for instance, if you don't like the path align, you s or the path vertical align, horizontal align we had before, if it's auto, middle, left, right, or here we get some custom error message, invalid property, it should be auto, left, middle, right. Okay, so the way you def you can really easily declare your your parsers the way to interpret your CSS in a custom way and decide the parser this uh, converts the the CSS value into a actual property value and then you have your eventual setters that will actually apply this value to your object for instance here the, sc the scale property affects both the, the scale x and y for the same uh, thing so it's you have you have a way to, for instance the margin property here uh, will affect uh, the padding of different values. So that's a way to also to create components for and uh, bring uh, give them some CSS kind of interface that is not at all implemented originally in the component itself. So you can do both ways. You can either implement it directly in the component if you want to declare components that are already aware of uh, DOM kit or like this way. Or you can, other way is to, you have a, an existing set of components and you want to be able to use these components with DOM kit, then you declare like the, the class I showed you just now, which are a way to bring to give these components a CSS access. So yeah, that's, and uh, so with this way, we get uh, 
perfectly typed on their list on rig typed uh, HTML and CSS. The only thing that it doesn't, I haven't showcased you, but you can actually load CSS files at runtime and apply them to your components and it will work as well. It will go through the validation of the CSS properties and it will apply them to the component. Right now it's quite, because it's CSS, we are still allowing a lot of errors to go, not creating uh, runtime errors, but you can catch the warnings and say, for instance, if it's because we don't know, we don't always know with CSS because it's mostly based on classes. We don't know when from a class, we don't know how the property need to be parsed for a specific component. Because unlike CSS, you can have, for instance, the, the property value can have different meaning on depending on which component is, uh, it is applied to. For some components, the value might be an int. For some other components, the value might be a string. So it depends really on the component name. Uh, but it's very efficient because we do some memoization of the result to make sure that we don't pass the CSS every time we need to apply it. So, yeah. And um, and what's last thing I wanted to show you, but it's not yet available, I'm still working on it, I couldn't finish on, on Monday, is that things I want to achieve is that a way to actually when you have this component displaying on your application is to have a way to uh, to track the change in your source file, such as if you modify your source file here, you get a, 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 a real-time refresh of your component components uh, running in your engine or in your system directly. And the same goes, of course, for the CSS file. So you get both the possibility to uh, have uh, something which is strictly typed, and at the same time have uh, a way to quickly iterate by changing things on the flow, and uh, and then hopefully have something that works well. Well, that's it. Thank you. If you have any question. Oh yeah, well uh, sure, sure. Okay, so components for components you need a, a bit of extra work because I haven't shown anyway. So first, your components they have to extend the base class, the base class of your component system because uh, either they are outside of the range of the components. You so here m my base class is h to the object. So here I have this custom component here which extends as to the object with these two values. And um, and of course, I need a constructor for them, which I will write down. Well, actually, I shouldn't. It's inherited, the constructor is inherited, so maybe I don't need it. And uh, what I want here, is I need another step, which is to register the component into the component system so the markup knows about it, because it might be in some other, other file, and uh, we want to make sure that it's uh, registered so that we can't use comp here, there, okay? So I will register here. I have uh, some, actually, some uh, init components uh, here, uh, which is already done, so I can add my own. Yeah, and it's failing, I guess, because we're trying to compile this file while we... Okay, we should put this one, I guess, in a different file, after all, because we are using both the components in the file that declares it, so it's obviously creating some problems. Okay, 
let me check. Okay, there might be some little still issues with VS Code cache. I'm just restarting just a bit. Okay, now it compiles and it works. So if I have here and I have uh, this com core I read and I made a typo here and I compile, yeah, I get red should be red, green, blue. Okay, you see? So now if I want to, okay, this will make sure that uh, it creates a component red that gets added to the component flow that is our view, but it doesn't still doesn't display anything. So here we might say, okay, uh, what if I, let's say, I will not instead object, but instead bitmap, which is a So here I'm translating my enum, which is uh, has three different color. I translate it directly to the hexadecimal color that is needed for this, and I create uh, a 20 by 20 uh, tile, which is actual uh, full color square. And I sending okay, and I'm setting this and return. See, that's something minor. And if I Okay. Okay, I have oh I see I have I have already have a, a color value, so I will just change it here. And this is a cache for am I working on it? Just this is part of the com compiler cache. This is a small issue I've been fighting with. I will fix it soon. And see I need to do uh not color but C color. Yeah, I change. Okay, and running. Uh, okay, I just one last thing, which is a bitmap takes a constructor. Uh, yeah, it complains about a lot of things. So bitmap takes a tiles as a, as a, val as a value, and uh, right now I have a, uh, this something I'm working on to be able to pass uh, to pass uh, values to constructors directly when creating the components and to have them be mandatory. So you don't have to have a default constructor that takes no arguments when creating a new component. And I think we should be done. Yeah. Okay, so here are full components that actually display something. Uh, here are the C colors that set the tiles. By default, the tile is null, which doesn't display anything. And uh, it's used in this part here. And I can compile and run. Hmm? Oh, okay, yeah, cannot report it here live on null. So I have to uh, change that here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's good. Okay, red. Okay, and. Uh, Okay, one last small thing, which is quite nice, I find a new switch in a feature. You can give it a name, this component, saying name equal uh, CCP. And here you can actually say, okay, view 
dot ccp, which is a com component, dot c color. Oh, it's not public. Okay. Public. That C color equal, uh, I put a caps lock, equal green. Yeah. And I run, and it compiles, and should work. What's wrong? Ah, again, a co again, a problem with compiler cache. It's something I'm working on. And it's green, okay? So, and it's all type safe. So if, I, if I put, for instance, uh, just like green like this, green, and I compile, the compiler will tell me green is not part of Kunstone Pillow, and it says suggestion green. So you get a full type safe uh, compliance system. And uh, yeah, it's so the only work you need to do when you want to implement this component system is to implement your components or expose this to component systems and define the way you want the CSS to be uh, to apply to your object properties. And this can work with any kind of structural uh, documents. As long as you have one way, uh, some documents that are expressed in a tree that have children and that have properties, you can map, zep, map them to this compliance system and use the CSS values to declare them, modify them, apply CSS rule to them. It's optional if you want to. And uh, have them named and uh, use the whole system. Yep. Other questions? I don't know coconut in all details. I guess it maybe there be some, some common overlap. Hmm? Uh, right now, you cannot track the data changes, but I'm sure we can add this quite easily uh, to the by having additional ways to deal with that. I mean, that's that's something that could be easily added, I guess, to make sure that we don't have yet also like a virtualization of the object model. So right now, uh, all the objects are actually really created, which I think uh, like URI coconut is more about a virtual DOM that creates a virtual, well, we could have a virtual representation of this and then delay the creation of the, that's more features that can be added on top of it. Right now I'm focusing on having things like type safe and uh, defini a way to define all things works. After we, you can have as many features. Right now it's still early, so I don't have it. Uh, it's not yet supposed to be a React replacement at this point, but it might as well be for X users at least in later phase. Other questions? Why is the box on the left or the hello? Because I think we uh, it's added after, and the we are, since we are on the line on the right. Uh, all elements are aligned on the right, so first the low and then the box. That's a yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Right now we don't uh, have this. I can show you with another example from the actual uh, sources of the library. And of course, I don't have the open with VS code. I don't know why on this computer, so I have to open it again from here. Um, open, does it show here? No. Open folder. Let's 
So this is what is on GitHub right now. So the library and a small sample. And uh, the sample have uh, uh, just a test file similar. So, so it doesn't do any display. It's just a sample that shows the logic. So here you have, you have, a, uh, you have a class. So here we have really a, a class, uh, CSS class foo. And uh, here you have a custom component, name sub with a custom color showing. Okay, we can have these kind of things. So it's just tracing and saying that okay, the color is blue and the padding left in. And then, it okay, and then it pass is using this. It's creating taking a CSS style. Is a parsing uh, CSS declaration which say dot uh, foo so the class foo custom so any custom component inside the foo class has a padding left of 50. Then we apply this to the object that we created this way. It have a, because it uh, implements the the uh, UI kit object. It has this set, set style uh, method that is added, and you can apply any style sheet to it. And then the sub padding left get changed from zero to fifty thanks to the CSS. So it can pass a lot of, uh, this is just a small sample, but it supports all the CSS notation, uh, I guess. Maybe not the CS, all the CSS tree uh, um, selectors, but that's something that can be added also at the latest, latest stage. So yeah, so and it's is currently custom CSS implementation, so you don't need to run in a browser to have it, like the CSNs, uh, he's a parser that does pass the CSS thing, and this is a CSS style, style that actually applies the style uh, to the different elements. It's quite not so so big thing uh, right now because we don't again support all the selectors and everything, but it's something that can be changed later. And in this test, we have uh, two. We have an object here, and we have two. Component we have custom and my div, which are uh, yeah declare here. We have base component which has a name, and we have a div component with just some padding declaration, and we have a custom component which is just div component and just just have a custom a custom parser for the for the CSS. So it's just just a small example of how you declare components and. Uh, or you expose them to uh, to DOMKit. Okay. Well, s thank you. Then uh, more question? Oh no, okay. thank you. <laughs> uh, I think so, yeah, yeah. We have Q and A with Simon, I guess, maybe, or maybe some Q and A. No. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> okay, so we could just take a few questions and we. Yeah, we j can we get just take a few questions and wrap up? Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, there was some potential questions about, I don't know, for Simon, for about the compiler or explanation or like other topics. Uh, but I think we are running out of time, so. So we can do that out, out with a few beers, that will be as well. Maybe, maybe even better, yeah? yeah? Okay, thank you.